Intelligence is many different things. Think about chess, for instance. Computers can already beat humans at chess, but chess is a game that's governed by a few rules and is played on a board with only 64 squares. Our world is not like that. We don't live on a chessboard. Our world is unstructured and the possibilities are endless. In our robotics research, we try to bring artificial intelligence into the real world, and that's a completely different game. We don't often think about our everyday activities as requiring any form of intelligence, but still, doing anything in the real world, such as moving around without bumping into anything, is very hard for robots to do. Still, insects they manage to do it all the time. Here at Derrida, our approach is to try to solve complex real-world problems by using a swarm of simple robots. Instead of trying to mimic human intelligence, we take inspiration from the observation of social insects, such as ants and bees. In social insects colonies, individuals might be very simple, but when they work together, they can do remarkable things. Here we see a group of ants working together to transport an object much too heavy for a single ant. The key principle of swarm robotics is that lots of simple robots following simple rules can carry out complex tasks. Having swarms of simple robots gives you lots of benefits. The robots can work in parallel. While some of the robots are doing one task, the other robots can be performing another task entirely. The system is also robust to failures. If some of the individual robots fail, the rest of the robots can keep carrying out the task. Our robots don't quite resemble ants, but they can move around independently, and they can also grab onto each other. This ability gives the swarm a type of flexibility, because by gripping each other in different ways, the swarm can form different shapes. This is morphogenesis. In our research, we try to mimic the intelligence of insect swarms. Although our robots cooperate closely with each other, there is no central brain guiding them. This means that each robot has to act individually. The robots communicate by lighting up in different colours. The problem is that the robots can only see each other when they're very close to each other, and the image processing they do is very basic. We came up with a small set of simple rules for each robot to follow. For example, when one robot lights up in blue and green, the other robots try to grab it. When all the robots follow one rule set, they grow into a particular shape. By changing the set of rules, we can grow different shapes. We are currently working on using morphogenesis as a way for robots to adapt to their surroundings. If, for example, a swarm of robots needs to cross a hole, they could form lines to bridge the gap. Alternatively, if they need to move a heavy object, they could form a shovel shape to push the object. In the more distant future, swarms of robots could operate on other planets. Swarms of nanobots could even operate inside the human body. In either of these scenarios, the robots could use morphogenesis as a way of forming the shapes they needed to get the job done. <laughs>